Do your muck runs look like this? to go back to the drawing board. Yeah. You little mother Don't forget to like the video, it helps me a lot. I don't know about you, but I had a lot of trouble beating Muck on Gamer. But I've devised a strategy for you guys that will help you make every run turn into a good run. No seed needed, okay? Get that poopoo pee pee baby time out of here. I don't want to spawn with a black sword on day one. The current version I'm playing on for Muck is 1.3, so just in case things change, you know what patch this video is based on. But it's very simple, guys. Just find a village. Are you sure about that? Now I know what you're thinking. What if I spawn and there's no village near me? It's okay. Even if you spawned in a village, you wouldn't have enough gold to buy the tools off of them anyways. Whether you spawn in a village or far away from one, it's a win-win because either way, you're going to have to farm up gold to buy stuff off of them. Also, the map really isn't that big, so finding a village is actually easier than you may think. I mean, do you really want to spend this much time farming this material? Stop it. Get some help. Skip the middleman and jump straight to the good stuff. And you know what? Let me just prove a point. Let me just hop into a game right now. So as soon as we spawn, we're just going to start looking. Start looking for a village. And I, I think I already found one. Yep. That's a village. Let's just do this again. I'm trying to prove a point here. Okay, fresh start. We're gonna look for a village again. And <laughs> I see one right there. Let me let me turn the screen. There we go. We're doing this again. Alright, third time's the charm, right? And with this strat, you do want to see where you are at the beginning of the game. So I'm kind of in the middle of the map, but feel free to enter every hut you go by. Because you never know what you're gonna find. Alright, this is much better. I'm not finding any houses. I'm not finding a village. It's just not in sight. And this is good. All right, so I've scanned pretty much this whole side of the map and I don't see a village. So we're gonna go to the other side and see what we can find. And always remember where you spawned at the beginning of the game so that you don't cover ground you already have looked at before. We wanna cover as much ground as we can, as fast as we can. And don't forget to pick up any consumables you find on the ground. They will be good enough to keep you alive for the time being while you're looking around looking for a village. Okay, no village. It's not looking good, so let's just make a workbench and make a weapon for the time being. Now this is okay. I haven't found a house yet. I mean, I'm kind of low on HP, but I have enough food to survive. And, you know, chances are you won't be this unlucky, but even if you are this unlucky, it's okay. You can still make a workbench out of some wood you have and at least make some weapon so that you can handle the night. And there we go, I found one. You can see it right in front of me. And it took a while to get to this point, right? It took me a while to find a village, but it's gonna be okay. Like I said before, even if I found the village early, I would still have to go out and farm gold. Now I'm coming into the village with a good amount of gold anyways. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do when you run into a village is to start opening every chest and start breaking every barrel. You can break these barrels with a rock and you wanna break every barrel because you can find gold in them. You also find basic materials in them too but don't open the chief's chest. If you do open it, all the villagers will attack you and you will lose your chance of buying anything off of them. Okay, so we're looking for the woodcutter and we're also looking for the smith. So this was the best case scenario. The woodcutter and the smith did have the tools I wanted, but sometimes they don't have the adamantite axe, but chances are they will have the type of wood you need to make the tool that you want. So for here, we do have, we do have oak wood coming out of the woodcutter. And if we go to the smith, he is selling adamantite ore, he's also selling a rock, whatever. So just buy what you can to get the best tool you can possibly get. So for instance, say the adamantite pickaxe wasn't here. I had the opportunity to go to the smith here, get adamantite ore, and also get 10 oak wood from the woodcutter. And yes, it's definitely worth your time to do that because like I showed you before, you don't want to be farming a rock it takes forever when you're farming rocks or the the ores. So you don't want to do that. Once you get everything you need from the, the villagers, say, Mr. Woodcutter, thank you for the axe. It's very good for cutting trees, but I'm going to use it to cut your flesh. Don't do it. Ah, uh, 
No! No! Okay, yeah, thanks for the axe. Oh, this is a very, this is a very fine axe. Thank you. Thank you so much. They gave us a lot of gold. They gave us some iron bars. And now we can start pushing for the end game. So now that we have our tools, let's move on to the next step, making gold and making a sword. Every three nights, a boss will spawn. So typically, you do want to be as strong as you can be before it spawns. So what I like to do before night three is make gold bars and make the best sword I can. The power-up chests are their cheapest before day four begins. So you want to spend as much gold as you can before the prices go up. Usually, I can make an Obamium sword before night three. But if you can't make one, just make a different sword. You could get by with that one, but killing the boss fast is important. Also, if I have any bars lying around, I'll use them to make some armor too. Once you've made it past the third night, you've gone past the strongest hurdle of the game. Congratulations. We can now focus on getting as strong as we can as fast as possible. And we're also going to be pushing to make the materials that we need to fix the boat. Here's a picture that shows all the materials you're going to need to fix a boat. I won't go over this. Just pause the video here so that you know exactly what you need to farm. Now, while farming for boat mats, I like to make the Abomian armor set. And I'll continue farming gold ores. You'll always want gold to buy power-ups. And you'll fall way too far behind if you're not constantly getting any power-ups as time goes by. Make sure at some point you do go to the boat to pick up the gem mat. You will need that to find all the gems scattered across the map. Ideally, if you're farming something and you happen to be close by the boat, just go onto the boat real quick, get the map, and you're good to go. A good goal to set is to have the boat fix before night 12. This is when the game really ramps up in difficulty, so there will be multiple bosses spawning at once. It's just a, it's just a bad time. Get the boat fixed before this happens. So that sums up everything that you have to do. So let's just backtrack a little bit here. After night 3, we continued to constantly farm gold. We finished making an Obamium sword. And we also gathered all the necessary mats to fix the boat. Ideally, you want to do all these things together in a timely fashion so that you can quickly get the boat fixed and get off the island. If you're lucky and you get the chance to make a legendary weapon, do it as soon as possible. If it takes too much time to make it, or if you get the chance way too late in your run to make one, don't bother and just settle with the Obamium sword. <laughs> Yeah, Bob is kind of a joke. Sorry, Danny. The fuck you say to me, you little He does fly around and shoot fireballs, but you just dodge him. And when he does land, just jump on his back and smack the shit out of him. <laughs> you can also go on the ladder right under him. It won't protect you from all his attacks, but it's still a really good spot. And that's it. You kill Bob, and then you're a hardcore gamer. We don't care. Now, there is a good amount of RNG in this game. I can't guarantee that if you follow this strategy, you will succeed every time. But I can tell you that if you do adopt this strategy, you will have better runs and more consistent runs. There are a few tips I like to mention. Um, make more than one furnace. You'll save a lot of time if you're smelting a variety of ores at once. Also, apple pie is very good. All you need is wood, wheat, and apples, and they don't take much time to farm at all. You'll walk across wheat and apples all the time, so it's a very time efficient food to make. Plus, it's one of the best foods in the game. And lastly, learn the attacks of your enemies. For the most part, you can just run in circles around them while weaving in attacks, but some of them are different, especially the bosses. So use the terrain to your advantage, and you can always play it safe. That pretty much sums up this video. Please drop a like and subscribe if you found this video helpful to you. And hopefully you don't have to depend on an OPC to succeed. Like, okay, <laughs> seriously, using a seed? Baby time. Poo-poo baby. Poo-poo pee-pee baby time. Whee!